A couple of weeks ago, Canon released their EOS Webcam Utility Beta. Uh, it's software that lets you use most Canon camera bodies as regular USB webcams in software such as Skype or Zoom or even OBS. Uh, they're the first major camera manufacturer to do so, so let's take a look at how it works. Traditionally, pure camera companies have avoided letting you use their nicer camera bodies as regular USB webcams. Instead, they've been focusing on clean HDMI. That's full resolution HDMI output, but without all of the settings and squares and stuff like that that you'd see on the LCD screen on the back. This has led to a cottage industry of HDMI capture cards and odd software hacks that are often complex, often expensive, and frequently poor quality. For instance, there are guys on the internet that will show you how to capture the live view feature in Canon's own EOS utility. Unfortunately, that feature is, is made for lining up shots. It's not made for video capture, so it's low resolution and it's got a poor frame rate. On the other end, there are companies that will sell you HDMI capture cards that will let you take that clean HDMI output and view it as a video stream in any of those video applications. However, those cards start at about $100 and go up to three, dollars $400 for a consumer-grade version. And with the pandemic, they're extremely hard to find, and when you can find them, the prices are through the roof. So with this lack of availability and price gouging due to the quarantines, Canon's release of the software couldn't come at a better time. Installation of the software couldn't be easier. Just head over to the Canon EOS Webcam Utility Beta site. Scroll down and pick your camera from the list, and then pick the Webcam Utility Beta Installer. Once installation is complete, you should see EOS Webcam Utility Beta in your video sources. If all you see is this EOS Webcam Utility Beta logo, that means your camera is either not plugged in, not turned on, or something else is using your camera. So quality coming out of the Webcam Utility is just good. It's definitely not great. I'm only able to get 1024 by 576 resolution. That's obviously far lower than even older 720p cameras. Now the pixels that are there look great. I mean, you know, the glass is great, the sensor is great, uh, the color rendition is very accurate. So it's a very good looking 1024 by 576, but that is a very low resolution. So the second problem is frame rate. It's nowhere near 60 frames per second. It's definitely not 30 frames per second. I would put it closer to 20 or so with an occasional dropped frame. Now, that may be okay for Twitch streaming or other videos where this stream is not going to be the primary focus of the video. Uh, however, it's not going to replace solid 1080p 60 video for me uh, on my YouTube channel. So the third issue is latency. I'm calculating about 200 milliseconds difference between the audio being recorded and the video coming out of the software. Now in OBS you can correct for that. You can set a, a latency factor on your audio source and that will sync them up. I've had to do no post-processing to resync this video and audio. However, that's OBS. If you're using something like Zoom or Skype or, or any of the other applications, uh, you may not have those options and you may have to deal with out of sync audio and video. So let's say you want to try out these new webcam features. Uh, there are a few caveats. First is power. Even though your camera is plugged into USB and you're obviously transferring the video over USB to your PC, many Canon cameras do not charge over USB. Uh, instead, you're going to have to buy what amounts to a battery blank and shove that in there with a wire coming out the side plugged into your mains power if you want more than the hour or two that your battery would give you. So caveat number two is sleep times. By default, Canon cameras will automatically go to sleep if they're powered on and left idle. So if you're in picture or video mode and you haven't touched it, you're not actually recording video or taking pictures for 15, 30, 60 minutes, whatever your setting may be, the camera will just shut off and that completely disconnects it from USB. The EOS software is smart enough to know whether you're using the stream or not. Whenever you start streaming from the camera, it will open the shutter and let the video signal through. And whenever you're finished and you close the stream down, it will close the shutter, at the same as if you're starting or stopping a video. However, if you're not utilizing that stream for long periods of time, those sleep settings will take effect and you'll have to get up and tap a button or something to wake your camera back up. So if you're using a continuous power supply like one of the battery blanks, just tell your camera to never turn off, problem solved. So the third caveat is software compatibility. Every device that you connect to your computer advertises itself as a specific device type to Windows, and that device type determines what capabilities it offers and what software it's compatible with. 
The EOS webcam utility advertises itself as a portable device, which is pretty unusual. My actual webcam is advertised as a imaging device, which kind of makes sense. The HDMI capture card, the only one that's actually not a camera, is the only device of the three that advertises itself as a camera. The end application determines which device types it's compatible with, and my testing has shown a bit of a mixed bag. OBS and Zoom have worked without any issues whatsoever. Discord will show the EOS utility as a video source, however when you select it, all it does is open and close the shutter without ever piping over a video feed. Skype is just bonkers. It seems the web app and the full desktop application will work fine with the software, uh, but the, the default Windows 10 app, the one that comes pre-installed, that one doesn't show. However, that app doesn't even show my actual Microsoft webcam as a video source. There's a thread on the Canon support forums where application compatibility and, and future features are being discussed. Um, if you're not sure if your software is compatible, I would head over and check that thread first. What you're looking at here is a comparison between my webcam on the left and my Canon camera on the right. Now, these are the default streams. There's no saturation settings. I didn't adjust like the autofocus or zoom or anything like that. This is what you're going to get directly out of the cameras uh, if the, the first time you plug them in. Now, you can notice that the, the colors on the webcam are a bit oversaturated, whereas on the Canon stream, everything is nice and sharp. The colors are nice and flat. Uh, it looks like a much more professional stream. So now I've also reset my microphone delay so you can see exactly how much latency there is in each stream. So what you're looking at here is a three-way split between my webcam, the Canon camera, and a GoPro Hero 7 Black connected to an HDMI capture card. I thought this would be an interesting comparison because a lot of people may have a Canon camera and then you know the webcam utility would be a great option for them. A lot of people probably already own a GoPro and the, maybe the HDMI capture would be a great option for them. And a lot of people are just trying to get by on as small a budget as, as possible and maybe a $40 to $50 webcam would be ideal for them. Now, there are obvious video quality differences between the three cameras, and this is as zoomed in as the GoPro gets. There are wider zoom modes than this, so you, you can basically see this whole half of this room uh, in its super view mode, uh, but it doesn't get any more narrow. So if you want to do anything more narrow than this, you're going to be digitally cropping your, your, your video stream. I did want to cover some latency tests, because the latency is different between each of these three options. Now it is obvious that the Canon is slower than the other two. You can definitely see me clap later and the light go on after the other two cameras. So first we'll record using the EOS webcam utility in OBS. Uh, if you liked this video and found it useful, please like and subscribe to Little Mikey's Big Plans. So this is take number two using the clean HDMI out of the SL3 into an Avermedia Live Gamer HD2. Uh, if you found this useful, please like and subscribe to Lil Mikey's Big Plans. So this is take number three. This is recording 1080p 60 directly to the card inside the camera. If you found this comparison useful, please like and subscribe to Lil Mikey's Big Plans. So in looking at the three frames, the EOS utility is definitely the softest, followed by HDMI and the VSD card. However, the EOS utility was much closer to the HDMI capture than I thought it would be, especially given the resolution difference. Direct recording to the SD card just blows them both away, though. So who is this for? Well, if you already have a decent webcam capable of pumping out 1080p at 30 frames per second, uh, or a decent HDMI capture setup, uh, you're not gaining much by moving to this software. Uh, and it's definitely not going to replace recording video directly to the SD card. But keep in mind, this is the first release of beta software. It still has a long way to go, and, and hopefully Canon can address some of these quality and compatibility issues as it moves toward release. On the other hand, if you find yourself caught in the middle of a quarantine, overwhelmingly bored, and wishing you could get into streaming, but all you have is this fancy Canon gear around, well, this is the right software at the right time for you.
If you enjoyed this video, please smash those like and subscribe buttons. And if you have anything to say about this video or something you'd like to see in the future, please leave a comment below.